they made it. I didn't think they'd be able to do it, but they pulled through in the end. I was wrong. It was looking ugly in the beginning, but the postseason has finally arrived. Now with fresh bubbles to prevent any more outbreaks from spreading to teams. This postseason will be more expansive with 16 teams reaching for the championship. It just brings in more chaos, but we still have our good stories. I don't know how they do it. I keep getting baffled by the moves that they make, but the results obviously speak for themselves. Folks, this is why I am nowhere near a baseball franchise, and for very good reason. I'd probably ruin the Rays the first second I step into the office. The thing with Tampa is that nobody is really performing at an outstanding level, but they're well-rounded. They don't have many weaknesses in their lineup or pitching staff, and that has made them successful enough to win the AL East. It also doesn't hurt that Nick Anderson has been lights out as a closer. Hitting-wise, they've been led by the slick fielding Willie Adames and Brandon Lau, but there's nobody who's really taken charge. A team of good, but not great. Now, only if Austin Meadows could return to form, he has the potential to truly take this team over the edge. The curse of Moneyball has returned for another round of pushing for a World Series, yet somehow being smited by the gods in the process. This time around, it will have to be done without Matt Chapman, who's not coming back this year due to injury. However, Arizona was kind enough to push Jake Lamb out the door, so cheap insurance policy for him. The key to the A's is in the bullpen. It's been lights out this season, led by Liam Hendricks and with more depth to whack a stick at. The problem is, I just don't know if they have enough horsepower in the starting pitching or hitting to reach the promised land this year. Unless Mike Miner and Manaya go back to 2019 form, the bullpen will have to have an unfairly large load for success and they know it. I'd say win it to be honest. I'm tired of this team always coming up short. Nelson Cruz is the badass grandpa of baseball. The sensei of the long ball. He was so potent the guy was leading the league in home runs for a good chunk of the year. The rest of the hitting core isn't truly Bomba Squad, but it's still a formidable dong smashing machine. Every time Byron Buxton is healthy is a special time. The true strength of the team this time around is in the pitching core. It's one of the strongest in baseball from the team perspective. My aid up a Rios old man, Rich Hill, and a sturdy bullpen make them into a legitimate foe. Now the question is who is this team going to be facing in the opening round? Oh. The Astros, eh? They match up well against them at least. And it's not the Yankees, so they may have a chance of winning a few games. <laughs> Let's talk about Shane Bieber for a moment. The good kind of Bieber. At least if you're on the Indians. Everyone else gets their legs swept. Show no mercy, have a nice day. As he more than likely wins the AL Cy Young, they have another piece to lead the hitting core. The Baptist revival of Jose Ramirez. See him smash the baseball? That will happen to you if you're not careful. Yes, they still have Lindor, thanks for asking. A stable outfield not included. As a dessert for your pleasure, here is James Gorinchek and his blistering stuff. With their riches in pitching, they could chuck a ball at a random passerby and he will somehow turn into a decent reliever. Years of frustrating disappointments have led to this watershed season for the team. They're riding a white-hot winning streak heading into the playoffs, so momentum isn't going to be an issue for them this time around. This might be your best chance to get back to the World Series. Avenge some demons for us. It's been a tumultuous year for the Pinstripes. First, they went on a scorching hot streak. Then everyone got injured. Then the replacements for everyone ended up getting injured on top of that. And then Gary Sanchez forgot how to hit a baseball. Then they were rolling out a glorified AAA team most days. Then the fanbase was ready to put Garrett Cole's head on a spike. Then everyone conveniently came back to beat the shit out of the Blue Jays. I am most surprised that Giancarlo and Judge being in the lineup would lead to success. But enough of that. Let's take a moment to honor our new legend of the game. Luke Voigt is a demigod in disguise as a man. A flick of his wrist will make opposing pitchers weep like children. He knows what the goal is. World Series are bust. If there is more disappointment, like in the past decade, there will only be lamentation and self-pity. There may be a train to take into the Hudson if that happens. <laughs> Karma has been quite laser-guided this year, hasn't it? You figured this was going to be another strong year for the Astros. Well, my naive friend, the gods had other plans. It's been a tumultuous road at best. Verlander and Osuna dealt season-ending injuries early on. The pitching staff forced to conscript 12-year-olds due to attrition. Jose Altuve losing his magical gnome powers. Now he's just dunked on nearly every day. A team full of talent going on prolonged losing streaks on several occasions. Despite hype and expectations, the odds are stacked against them. There is nothing more that any other team in the league will want than to humiliate them in a series. This is the fate the Astros have handed themselves. You won't have the benefit of the doubt this time. Good luck. You'll need it. I'd be glad the White Sox finally lived up to their potential, but we need to talk for a moment. Chicago, please explain the last week of the season. You were lining up for a division clinch, yet you proceeded to utterly collapse on yourselves like your neighbor did last season. Boys, why? 
You have Luis Robert. You have Jose Abreu having a career season. You have an emerging pitching staff. You have legitimate talent throughout the lineup. Why the sudden immolation back to the frustrations of the last few seasons? Why am I getting the sneaking suspicion that your success this season was built on smoke and mirrors? A good bit of your pitchers are getting bailed out by feeling, and Robert has slumped dramatically. Please, White Sox, don't do what you're doing. It's not funny. Stop it! Youth is a beautiful thing. You feel invincible. So much opportunity at your fingertips. To see the likes of Boba Shedd or Vlad Jr. crushing the ball with impunity. To witness the growth of the depth like flowers in the wilderness. To develop a pitching core that has a chance to make noise in future seasons. These are the new Blue Jays. Fresh from a blow up of the team back in 2018 to probably get their asses kicked in the learning experience year. All I hope is that they bring us a fun product to watch in these next few weeks. They are looking good for the future, even in the brutal AL East, so anything else from this point forward is gravy. You never know about these kind of teams. Maybe they'll be good when they get back to Canada too. I'm not going to waste that much breath on the Dodgers. You spent more money on paying Mookie bets for a long time because of the true prize. The World Series. Years of choking have dulled your luster, but the talent is still there. The best record in baseball is proof of that. The pitching core is full of quality starters, for God's sake. The only thing that could stop Los Angeles are themselves. The Dodgers did a damn good job of that last season. Only time will tell if that will continue. No more excuses. You know what you need to do. I figured the NL East would be one of the toughest divisions in baseball. Little did we all know the only toughness would be in outlasting each team's self-destruction. The Braves merely won the division by imploding on the field the least during this time. The hitting core is unquestioned, but the Braves' biggest issue this time around? Starting pitching. It's been decimated by a combination of long-term injuries and whatever happened to Mike Fultonevich. Common logic would say to capitalize on the current window and bolster the rotations, so they did that, right? You... you didn't do anything about the starting pitching issues? You patched it up with some duct tape and Tommy Malone? And now Max Fried may be dealing with an ailment as well? I can't say you didn't do this to yourselves. I don't know how they did it, but the Cubs have managed to find this infamous potential they've always got. They've at least played up to some semblance of it over these past two months. And most interestingly, their core hitters have been atrocious. Baez, Bryant, Rizzo, and Schwarber have been nowhere close to form, yet they've found a way to win. It's mainly been on the backs of the revived Hugh Darvish, Kyle Hendricks, and a random no-hitter by Alec Mills. Once again, the team bullpen is a massive issue, but it does have Jeremy Jeffress returning to 2018 Vintage. As for Craig Kimbrell, the less said on that, the better. I wouldn't talk about their latest skid to end the season either. At least you're here again. In a land far, far away from baseball civilization. Some say San Diego. There is a team that has brought new life to the game. A group of young athletes that burst out their charismatic bats and electric arms to put the world on notice. This, folks, is the tale of the Padres, a group that does not care for your stodgy unwritten rules. They only care for hitting dingers. And then hurling Denelson Lamed at you. Then hitting more dingers. Fernando Tatis Jr. leading the way. Manny Machado and Eric Hosmer rediscovering their strokes. Jake Cronenworth solidifying the middle infield as Trent Grisham overcame that moment. A group that decided to go all in at the deadline because they don't give a shit about being someone's rightful turn. They also have more prospects on the way. Because fuck your feelings. Slam Diego. Too bad you have to face the Dodgers if you make it to the NLDS. Please beat them for the laughs. There's a big reason why I'm against having 16 teams in the postseason this year. Not that I'm against teams getting a fair shot, but all it does is put mediocrity on a pedestal. If you want an example of such a team full of bleh, look at the St. Louis Cardinals. There's nothing here that screams playoff worthy. The hitting has been okay, the pitching has been okay, the bullpen has been okay. You call a team that can't hit for power worth a damn worthy of a postseason spot? Then I've got some Carpenter Salsa past its expiration date to sell you. If this team is going anywhere again, it'll have to be on the back of Paul Goldschmidt. Not even Jack Flaherty has been his dominant self, so this team screams placeholder. I know Cardinals fans are going to be pissed at me for this segment, but do you really see yourselves as true contenders? <laughs> What a world we live in, where the Miami Marlins are back in the playoffs. Okay, 2020, you can stop with the craziness now. Remember that this team dealt with a COVID infestation after the first weekend of play and was throwing out a team of scabs for several weeks afterwards. All it took was a greatly expanded postseason and the rest of their division completely imploding on themselves. You may dismiss them because of their god-awful run differential, the fact that they've been annihilated quite a few times this season, and a player core that shows signs of overachieving. But what you're really looking at are this year's World Series champions. You don't know the Marlin curse, do you? 
Well, child, come close, for I will regale you with tales of drunkenly stumbling to success. They've made the playoffs twice in their existence as a wild card. Guess what happened in those two years? Oh yeah, it's happening again. Bow down to your future master and Derek Jeter. I know they probably aren't going to maintain the meme, but I want to believe in that magic. Do it, Marlins. Back from the dead, I see. I was worried you were going to prove my cynical ass right and piss away another year where you should have been competing. But it's as if a little fairy whispered in their ear. If you don't win, everyone might get fired. Thus lit the fires of a thousand angry Trevor Bowers. Giving zero fucks about reputation, the Reds rattled off an impressive winning streak to revive their long shot ambitions and bring about new life to the team. Now only if the hitting core could play up to their abilities, I'd have more confidence in them in October. I pride myself and think of myself as a man of no faith, as there's a drive into deep left field by Castellanos and that'll be a home run. And so that'll make it a 4 0 ball game. I don't know how I'll be talking about them again. Whether that be for success or failure, whether that be here or from my bosses at Fox. <laughs> Making it by the skin of your teeth. Sounds like a Milwaukee thing to do, so I'll take it for what it is. The offseason involved deep overhauling of the hitting core, and from the looks of it, it made it take a turn for the worse. Most of the replacements for those that left haven't been pulling their weight. And by replacements, I mean the whole damn lineup. Even Yelich hasn't been anywhere near what he can be. When a majority of your regulars are hovering around the Mendoza line, you don't deserve to be anywhere near a postseason spot. But this is 2020. And they do have some new emerging pieces in the pitching, like Corbin Burns and Devin Williams. For the Brew Crew to avenge last year's choke, they will need everyone to be what they can be. No more underachieving, for this is a second chance. Against the Dutch. Well, it's been nice knowing you, boys. This is going to be interesting, even if there's a huge batch of mediocrity in the postseason. Nobody's truly safe. And that's the most interesting aspect of all. As for who I think will make the World Series this year, I'm going to go with the lazy option and say Yankees versus Dodgers. I just feel those two teams are better built for the postseason than the others. Even then, it's just really hard to tell who's going to come out of the AL. It's very tight over there. But enough talk. Let's have some good baseball, boys. wonder how he got into the ballpark. <laughs> 